Uh, hello there and welcome to the Object Center and uh, Pivot Point Center tutorial here in Blender that I'm going to be doing. I'm just quickly going to be going through these objects and uh, through this list here so you can see what the differences are in uh, this menu up here between the different pivot points. We'll start with the most simplest one which is Bounding Box. And basically the Bounding Box is just pivot would be the uh, center of what encompasses your mesh. and uh, you can see the bounding box by going over here to the uh, object tab, I believe it is, and looking down, finding the display, and hitting bounds. If you notice, it doesn't really do anything for the cube because the box is the same size as the cube here. So with that, I'll show you on this sphere. You see, bounding box is on. I turned it off. It's back on. And if you look, you can see that the cube is perfectly encompassed inside the box. All right. So when we rotate, and we're choosing a bounding box center here. We are basically rotating in the center of the box that encompasses our mesh. So if you look, you'll see it should rotate in every direction directly in the middle of the bounding box. That's really the most simplest one. Let's move to the next one, the 3D cursor. Now the 3D cursor is this funky looking thing here that is popping around. And it's very useful because you can make the object instead of rotating along its center where it normally does, you can choose the 3D cursor as a rotation point. This example here, you see now when I rotate the sphere, it's rotating around the 3D cursor rather than where it was rotating before. And that is very, very useful for, as you can see, uh, clocks, wheels, um, many other uh, circular objects, shields. Not only is it a good modeling tool, it's uh, useful for placing objects and stuff. Let's continue to the next one individual. And this one doesn't really look like it, do it does anything. It's actually uh, should be used in edit mode. If we grab a few faces and uh, extrude them, we scale them. Let's notice that they all scale to the center, towards the center of the bounding box. That's what we got selected here. And sometimes that's what we want, and sometimes that's not what we want. Let me go back for a second. There we go. Now let's try again. Now, this time, I'm going to switch it to the individual origins. And it doesn't look like much has changed, but when I start scaling now, you'll notice that each face. Uh, scales individually um, as the name says rather than when they were all scaling towards the center like so and that's a uh, very very useful as you can see it gives you a totally different shape especially for uh, when you want to grab multiple faces at a time but you want each of them to scale the way they should rather than as a unit let's move on median this one's a little funny and I haven't really found too many uses for it. You'll notice that Blender here, for the description, it'll tell you that you'll find the median point between objects, and I think that is the way it should be used. For example, if I grabbed this object and this object, the pivot point should be right in between both objects, and it appears to be. However, if you use this in edit mode, it can be a little tricky and not certain if this is a bug or if this is intentional, but if you grab a whole bunch of faces, you know, it's on median, it's fine. But if you switch back to the bounding box, you'll notice that the actual location changed. You see that? If you grab every face and switch between bounding box and median, uh, the pivot point doesn't change at all. So just be aware of that. I tend to stay away from median. Uh, I'd rather just use bounding box, to be honest. They're almost the same. And I don't think it should be used in edit mode. I'm not certain, um, but just so you know that 
it does do that. In case you missed it, here it is again. A couple faces, median, a couple faces, bounding box, and the pivot point changes. Last but not least is Acto, and this is very useful for placing, um, for moving rather from the selected, the last selected location. I'll show you what I mean. Lots of times when I model certain things, let's say eyelashes or something, I'll have something like this. And you switch to active element. The last uh, component you click, whether it's a face, vertex, or edge, it'll switch your pivot point there. And that's very, very useful because you can then uh, rotate the way you want something to rotate from a certain angle. Let's say I want it from here. Or instead, let's say I want it to rotate from the top over in the space. All I'd have to do is uh, deselect it and reselect it. Excuse me. There we go. And you'll notice now when I rotate, it's rotating from the last place I selected. And that goes with vertexes and everything. So and I'm rotating from this vertex, as you can tell. Very, very useful for placing objects and aligning things. Last but not least, I just want to show you how it affects the mirror. Just hide this out of the way for a second. When you build a mirror, go into your modifiers tab, it will always, always build the mirror around this pivot point, wherever your object's pivot point is. Be aware. But if you were to move the pivot point for any reason, like select my object first, the 3D cursor, you'll notice that I broke, I broke something, I broke the mirror, and it no longer works. Uh, sorry about that. It was a small interruption there. Anyways, um, continue with what I was doing. As you can see I undid there. This is where the origin point lies, and if you look right in the middle of the object and I uh, the cursor and that's what's causing the breaking of the mirror um, also be aware if you move something in edit mode you leave the pivot point behind and that can be a good thing or bad thing depending on the uh, how you look at it and it's useful for focusing on a part of your mesh if you have a bigger mesh I'll uh, demonstrate in a different video the last thing I just want to demonstrate is you can use the mirror modifier there, the second mirror and it's going to use a different object for its pivot point set it here to use the bounding box which is this object right here let's turn it back on here leave this off and there we go. And as you can see, it's got the first mirror, which is based on uh, right here around the pivot point. And the uh, second mirror, which uses this object's pivot point as the mirror point. And that's it.